Hello and welcome to the first video uh, for the secant formula, uh, meant to be viewed on April 24th, that's a Friday. Uh, in this video we'll go through uh, introducing eccentricity uh, into our buckling equations. Previously, when we've talked about uh, buckling in columns, we have assumed that if we have some cross section, that the load is applied exactly at the center, dead on at the center. Uh, but that's not how things ever are, really. It's impossible to get everything to be perfectly straight, everything all uh, completely uh, unbent after you've installed it and all your loads perfectly applied. So there's going to be some eccentricity to the applied load, either because of the load itself not being exactly, uh, exactly at the center, or because the column itself will have uh, some curve to it, some slight deflection to it. So rather than uh, looking at an unrealistic, perfectly straight, perfectly prismatic column uh, to get our buckling load like we did last time, we ought to look at a column that is not perfectly straight or that is not applied uh, perfectly uh, at the centroid. So if you have some eccentricity, like so we maybe we apply our load P off of the centroid of this, we're going to have not just an axial load, but a moment as well. Remember that we can do alternative load cases, like we talked about last semester. So we can get the same result that we get from this, from moving this load over to the centroid, like we'd like to deal with it, like that would make it a lot easier, uh, but then adding some, uh, some moment. So the results of this loading is going to be the same as the results of this loading, and of course this uniform bending is going to result in uh, this deforming. It's going to bend. It's going to bend like this. And so we're going to have some eccentricity here, some deflection. And so this right here, this point right there, is going to be our y max. So even, uh, so if whether we start with it applied non uh, perfectly at the centroid or if we start with the column in some way uh, deflected from perfectly straight uh, prismatic, uh, we're going to have some eccentricity and that's going to introduce uh, some, some reflections. So working with that, we're going to have a moment, obviously, let's call this P for our axial force. That will still be P, but this magnitude right here of the moment is going to be P times our eccentricity. So that means that we've got that our moment is equal to uh, P uh, times E at either end, but it's move it's uh, bent, right? So let's uh, let's look at that. I specify this is at either end. If we look at this more closely, let's uh, sort of zoom in on that. I don't have a camera, and I guess I could actually zoom in, but it would make my drawings badness even more apparent. 
So let's do that. Uh, we've got this moment right here. We've got this moment right here. We know that the moment right here is equal to P times E. And we've got this load, and we've got this load. Both of these loads, of course, P. So that means that Uh, no, not that. Green. This is our deflection, uh, our deflection Y. Which means that this moment down here, the moment as we move along this point, is going to be equal to P times E plus P times our reflection Y. That's not really X, interesting. Or, I guess, P times E uh, plus Y. And it's going to be uh, in, uh, in that direction. So, when we look at uh, our differential equation uh, for deflected shapes, we used to have uh, we used to have that zero was equal to uh, second derivative of the deflection plus p times uh, y, our deflection over e i, or maybe I multiply both sides by e y, and there's an e y over there and nothing over there. It's it's this, right? We we've done this before. Now we don't have this term. This term changes, and it becomes. So so let's get rid of this. We're we're extending this and making it a slightly more uh, involved. It's going to look very much the same. d squared y dx squared plus, but then now instead of y, we're going to have y plus e, or e plus y uh, divided by uh, E I times our force P, and that's going to be equal to zero. So uh, that's going to be, again, not something that I'm going to make you solve explicitly. It's just the source uh, of these next bits. So the next thing we're going to do is plug in uh, two boundary conditions. One is that a deflection at zero better equal zero, and the deflection at L also had better equal zero. Now, some of you might uh, recall the general form. Uh, of the uh, of of this uh, differential equation from you know what yesterday when you probably looked at that uh, but uh, so it's going to be uh, very similar but our boundary conditions are going to give us uh, a bit more complicated values for our constants or 